In this question, we are going to practice the WNC formula. Now, the reason that we cannot use the normal uh, W net equals to delta EK formula is because this question, if you read through this, they're asking us, or they're telling us that the person starts at point P and they are going towards point Q. Now, that is a curved surface. So remember, we've said that on a curved surface, this formula doesn't work. So that's out. So the only formula that really works in a situation like this is the WNC formula. And so obviously you guys have read through everything. What you would have found is that section PQ has no friction. And we have this learner who's over here who's a 50 kilogram learner, and that person is going to slide down. Now, of course, there's gravity parallel trying to pull that person down. But remember that gravity is a conservative force. It's not a non-conservative. So for the non-conservative forces, we actually don't have anything. So we're actually just going to say zero over here. And then for the delta EK, that's going to be EK final minus EK initial. And then for EP, um, for the delta EP, it will be EP final minus EP initial. Now the formulas for EK and EP are given to you in the exams. There they are. And so what we can do now is we can just say that zero is equal to a half M, which is 50. Now the final velocity at point Q, we don't know. So we can just say V squared minus. Now this person starts from rest. You see there? So the initial velocity would be zero. So I can say 50 times by zero like that plus. Now here's where students get a little bit confu confused. They don't know uh, what height they should use. So there's many different ways you can do this. So pay careful attention. It all depends where you set your reference position. For example, if you decide that you want your reference position or your starting position, not your starting, but like your reference point to be here, then the height of point P would be equal to three meters and the height of Q would be zero meters. Okay, hope that that makes sense. So the difference of their heights would be three meters because three and zero, that's three, right? Your other option would be to do something like this. You could set the actual ground as your reference point. So this would be your reference over here. But then what you would need to do is you would need to know this height. Now you can easily work that height out because of this triangle and this angle. And so you would use um, sin, you could say sin 30 equals to the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is five. And if you had to go work that out, you'd find out that the opposite is going to be 2.5 meters. So we would say 2.5 meters for that. So then all of a sudden, the height of Q would be 2.5 meters, and the height of P would be 2.5 plus 3, which would be 5.5. But if you look carefully, what is the difference? Well, the difference is still going to be 3 meters. So it doesn't matter where you set your starting position, the difference is still going to be the same. And remember, it's all about the difference that we are actually interested in. So set your starting point wherever you feel comfortable. I'm going to set my starting point at Q. And so what that means is that my final height will be zero because if Q is my reference point, then the height is zero over there. So that's going to be a mass of 50 times by gravity of 9.8 times by 0 minus the initial mass is obviously 50, 9.8. And if Q is my reference point, then the height of P would be 3 meters. There we go. And now we're just going to go ahead and simplify this all a little bit. So this would be 25 V squared uh, minus 0 plus 0 minus 1470. You then take the 1470 over to the left. You get that. You can then divide by 25, which would give you 58.8, and then take the square root, and that would give you 7.67. 7 7.67 meters per 
second. And so that will be the velocity or the speed of the learner at Q.